Hi guys, Sport Tutor here and my name is Anil Deshpande. In the previous video, while discussing supporting portrait and landscape layouts using on configuration changed method, I forgot to mention that how a particular layout was getting selected. You can observe that in the on configuration change the method at line number 102, I am explicitly setting layout that is r dot layout dot activity underscore main. So when the on configuration change method gets invoked because of the orientation change and if it is in the portrait mode, then activity underscore main XML file from the layout folder gets inflated. Otherwise, if it is in the landscape mode, then the layout hyphen land comes into picture and the layout from that particular folder will get inflated. I think this particular explanation makes it clear on how a particular layout file was getting affected using the on configuration change method. So let's continue the discussion. So far what we have seen is we are supporting different layouts based on whether the screen is in the landscape or portrait mode. But however this is not the only complete solution that exists in Android when it comes to supporting multiple layouts because orientations are not the only criteria for supporting multiple layouts what may actually happen is you may want to support multiple layouts based on different screen sizes when i say different screen sizes it could be mobile phones and tablets and even under tablets there could be a 7 inch screen tablet or a 10 inch screen tablet so in this video we will still continue to discuss supporting multiple layouts but slightly in a different way so let's continue the discussion. If you have a look at this particular diagram, we are basically talking about different screen sizes that is 7 inch tablet, 10 inch tablet and even mobile devices. And if you observe background colors of all these screens are slightly different. Now the question is how was I able to do it? If you pay enough attention, the screen sizes of all these devices are different. The width is different and height is different. Can I use these different screen sizes that is width and height as the criteria to support different layouts? Of course you can do that but there is a problem. Right now whatever that is there in the horizontal section, we are considering that as the width and whatever that is there in the vertical section, we are considering that as the height. But that is not always the case. Sometimes the horizontal section can become the height and the vertical section can become the width or just the opposite. You might be wondering how is it possible. Let's assume that you have a device with 100 pixel as the width and 400 pixel as the height. And for this particular device, this is the standard orientation and you designed the application for this particular device. And let's assume that I am running the same application on a different device, but for that particular device, 400 pixel is the width and 100 pixel is height. You might be wondering how is it that one particular device treats 100 as width and another device treats 400 as width. Well, it is quite possible because devices come with a default orientation and you may never know what is the default orientation of a particular device. It is quite possible that this might be the default orientation or even this one could be the default orientation. So the best option is to support multiple layouts. We should not use strictly the width and height. We should choose the shortest width as the criteria for designing the layouts. In all of these screens, the shortest width is always the same and we can use this as a criteria for designing multiple layouts and in Android it is made possible through layout or screen qualifiers. So for a 7 inch tablet the shortest width could be 600 dp and for a 10 inch tablet the shortest width is usually 720 dp and anything less than 600 dp is considered as a mobile device or a these large screen mobile devices which people typically call as tablets. So let's see programmatically how these screen qualifiers are being used in code. You already know that anything that comes under resource layout folder is used for portrait by default. And if you don't provide landscape, this is what gets applied even for landscape. And if you do decide to provide a different layout for landscape, then this is how layout hyphen landscape folder will come into picture. So you were using screen qualifiers already when we were supporting layouts for landscape. But now we will be going beyond that. For example, we 
might write something like layout hyphen sw 600 dp you might guess what sw means it is shortest width 600 dp so this is specifically meant for a 7 inch tablet and in case if you want to support 10 inch tablet you will be writing sw 720 dp so whatever that you have written here that is sw 600 dp or sw 720 dp is applicable for both portrait and landscape modes of that particular device if you want to slightly differentiate between the portrait and landscape on those devices then you can use once again landscape in front of the screen qualifiers that you have already used so it would be layout shortest width 600 dp and then hyphen landscape and for a 720 dp it would be shortest width 720 dp then hyphen and then landscape with this you can have even more finer control on what kind of screen layouts you are designing for different screen widths most of the times using shortest width as the screen qualifier will be more than sufficient for our screen designs but sometimes you may want to actually control width and height even that is possible instead of using shortest width you can use width that is w then the number and then the dp instead of width if you want to design based on height you can use h then number and then density independent pixel dp and once again you can use landscape option with those different width and height screen sizes and you can pretty much do the same thing with 720 dp screen sizes since there are quite a number of options that can actually go there to make it simple android uses much simpler representation using the anchor bracket and then the number between those anchor brackets so having understood this let's get into a demo let's not get into a demo in this particular video i have already overloaded you with lot of information we shall do that in the next video with demo on these concepts that brings us to the end of this particular video don't forget to like comment share the video and subscribe to the channel take care bye